Just recently, Helldivers 2 released a new patch that changed a whole bunch of things. Some good, some not so good, or at least not so fun, it seems like. Changing the game in a way that doesn't really reflect what a lot of the community seem to have wanted. So I'm going to go through some of the patch notes and then go through a blog post that they just posted afterwards after seeing the feedback. It explaining from their perspective why they changed some of the things they did and for what reasons. So starting with the patch notes, we have the core updates, which is planetary hazards are active. These are environmental challenges such as fire tornadoes or meteor showers that can be found on certain difficult levels or in certain areas that add another level of challenge and make certain planets and certain missions a little bit more dynamic. Essentially just consider another aspect of content thrown into the game as a part of the random generation of stuff you'll be dealing with. They changed eradicate missions to be a little bit longer than they are currently, apparently being about twice as long as they were before, which is what they say is the intended length of the missions. And then the more controversial changes starts here with the primary, secondary, and support weapons. Breaker got a decreased mag capacity and increased recoil. The railgun got a decrease in armor penetration during safe mode and decreased damage against durable enemy. Flamethrower got a buff of DPS by about 50%. Laser cannon got increased damage against durable enemy parts, better armor pen, improved ergo, punisher has its capacity increased, better stagger force, better damage per bullet, and then breaker spray and pray got some adjustments. Increased fire rate, increased pellets, decreased mag size. We also had stratagems, the energy shield backpack got slightly nerfed, and then the 380 millimeter and 120 millimeter got increased in duration and decreased in spread, so a buff overall. There are a couple other fixes and known issues, but that's the core sort of patch notes that everyone's been sort of complaining or talking talking about. And then in response to that, Arrowhead Game Studios actually went and made a blog post explaining why they did what they did to help alleviate people's concerns and sort of address the community's issues with the recent changes. So starting with primary weapons, they talked about how primary weapons aren't supposed to be the core way you take down certain enemies. They're not supposed to be an all-in-one solution. They're intentionally not supposed to be able to deal with certain enemies or groups. And you have to rely on your teammates and strategies gems to actually do that you know using airstrikes or orbitals support weapons turrets etc basically saying that the core primary gun is only a primary gun in the sense that you always have it not that it's the core weapon that you're supposed to be using at all times and then they talked about their general philosophy on nerfs and buffs and what they want to do in the future they talk about how they don't want to ruin the fantasy of how a weapon feels but they don't want to only buff items because that's not from a design perspective the best way to do things so they're trying to balance ways of making the game balanced but also having that power fantasy associated with certain weapons. When talking about the breaker specifically, they talked about how it was quickly shown as a meta weapon, or at least according to YouTubers, about how in Helldivers 1 the breaker was powerful as well. They wanted to sort of mimic that in this game. They talked about how they intended for it to be popular and for it to have a high DPS, but that it was outperforming from exactly how they wanted it. So they didn't want to give any damage nerfs, but they wanted to reduce the total damage per magazine and of course that was borne out in the reduction in magazine ammo. They also talked about the Punisher and how they buffed it adding stagger amount, shotgun pellets, and helping with the ammo that's being carried to sort of just make it feel a little bit better and feel like an actual alternative to something like the Breaker. They also talked about how the spray and pray is actually supposed to be pretty powerful and so they increased its RPM, they increased its pellets, basically upping the DPS but also decreasing the total damage per mag similar to how they did with the original Breaker putting it more in line with where they wanted that in the game. And then they talked about the railgun being a little too convenient for how efficient it is and how it didn't require a backpack so it could be paired with something like a shield and it had very little risk to take out some of the larger opponents in the game. They said their goal was to change it so that the safe mode was for penetrating medium armor forces such as scout walkers but anything like chargers or bile titans you're gonna have to overcharge it which puts you at risk of actually dying if you overcharge it too far and you have to always aim for the head and other weak points instead of anywhere on the body. And then they talked about how the flamethrower needed to be buffed. I don't remember if I talked about this in the patch notes. The laser cannon got a buff to penetration and it got a buff to overall damage. They talked about how the weapon looked cool and sort of gave off the vibe of being used sort of like a 
orbital laser and the expectation from players and their sort of power fantasy idea from it wasn't being borne out at all in the game. So they did some adjustments to hopefully make it feel more in line with what it looked like and what it felt like in game to actually match the DPS and performance of it. They talked about nerfing the shield backpack, too much safety, too effective, too powerful. They talked about how the 120 millimeter and 380 millimeter barrages were too inaccurate and too overall weak. So now their scanner area is smaller and they have an extra salvo so that they're a little bit more valuable, a little bit more useful. At the end of the day, the core points they were talking about was that you need to be effectively strategizing what items you're using to take down certain opponents. Primary weapons aren't supposed to be that powerful. The railgun was too risk-free for how much damage it did. The flamethrower wasn't useful enough. The laser cannon didn't fit the power fantasy and the other shotguns weren't in line with how powerful the base breaker was. That's sort of their explanation of how things should be in the game. From the player's perspective, there's already so few tools to take down some of these enemies, especially when they're spawning in such mass amounts at higher levels, that already before you would find yourself constantly just running, not really engaging with the mass amount of Bile Titans when dealing with difficulty nine missions. And you would just go clear out the mission and then run away to where they wouldn't be following you to the next location and do the same thing. Never engaging with enemies outside of what you have to do because there's always more enemies spawning constantly and there's always more Bile Titans spawning constantly in the bug missions. And then of course the equivalent with automatons as well. And there's so few tools to effectively take down these enemies where everyone was relying on rail guns and shields to tank hits and kill certain enemies like chargers so that they don't overrun you. And without these, it's gonna make those missions much, much more difficult than they were before. I don't think impossible. I think it'll just mean that no matter what, all four players in a match will have to be standing next to each other and playing with each other or else you're really just gonna be playing around avoiding fights in general because you have to be spamming stratagems to get enough enemies down to where you can clear enough space to take the objectives. Now that you can't rely on the rail gun to take out large enemies and the breaker to take out small enemies as effectively, we'll see how it bears out exactly in game. I think that people might be a little overcompensating for how much of a change these things are going to make. I think it's going to be a bit more subtle and people are just going to have to get used to overcharging their railgun instead of using safe charge. And what we'll see is a bit more teamwork being used, which I think is the goal. This might force people to sort of group up more in those higher difficulties, which might be their goal. I don't think the changes also take away from the power fantasy too much. I do think that there is an issue where other weapons do need buffed more. The laser did need buffed, so did the flamethrower. There needs to be other alternatives for other weapons as well. And although they did say that they don't want to buff things too much, I do think that they should buff a couple more weapons or provide a couple more alternatives to the current like meta setup that exists at the moment. <laughs> Wow.